Coming up on today's show, because we like to dwell on the negative, we asked you which summer movies will be the biggest flops. We also take a look at how to make fireballs from fruit peels, and we discuss how synthetic DNA will change the world. All that and more coming up on this episode of We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is brought to you by HostGator. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where science fact is fictionalized while we bring you science fiction facts. I'm Annalee Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. We both write for io9, the science fiction and culture website. Let's take a, way, look, take a look at what our science and our culture has brought us this week. Well, we're on our second episode, and we're excited about all your responses. And, you know, we promise to do better. And also, since all of you love the CGI background so much, in the future, we're both going to be CGI as well. So yes. I know you're going to love that. We're just going to be heads on floating alien bodies. That's our plan. So thanks for your feedback and helping us reach that conclusion. And now, this week's top headlines, where the idea of top is based on an algorithm you'll never understand. Chin implants are up 71% in the United States in the last year. What the f***? People are getting these weird silicon things stuck in their chins, and the president of the American Association of Plastic Surgeons said it's probably due to people seeing themselves on video chat. So Skype is helping out the plastic surgery industry? Also this week, we learned that there's a disease that makes you joke and pun uncontrollably. It's called Witzelzucht, and it's due to damage to the right front side of the brain, which is called the orbitofrontal region. Damage to the left side makes you morose, and damage to the right side apparently makes you punny, and we're really not sure which is worse. Also, an artist has created uncanny valley masks that make you look like bad CGI. It had to happen sometime. Designer Micah Harda created this art installation called Too Beautiful to be True. So if you ever wanted to look like a character from the Final Fantasy movie, this is your new fetish. And finally, in our history lesson today, we ask what happened to the iceberg that sank the Titanic? Scientists can actually reconstruct a lot of its history. It's a 3,000-year-old chunk of ice that probably came from Greenland down through the Arctic past Baffin Island where it wound up floating in the North Atlantic and had that horrible encounter with a giant metal can. It met the same fate that a lot of the people on the Titanic did for the same reason. The water it was in was just above freezing, which means it was deadly for humans and probably melted that glacier away soon after its deadly encounter with the Titanic. Okay, summer is coming, and those of us who fear the lethal killing power of the sun will need to get indoors and need quality entertainment while we're there. Will we get it? We asked you. We did a poll about which movies are going to sink this summer, and over 20,000 of you voted in the poll. We had to put the picks into categories. I guess the one we'd start with is Creative Barons, the movie that nobody spared even a moment's thought on. The first one is Battleship, which got what I thought was a surprisingly small 14% of the vote. And the second one is Total Recall, which got 19% of the vote. I mean, I think people just don't want to see the classic 1990 Paul Verhoeven flick redone. I mean, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's that, you know, he's on Mars going, Bleh! you know, the eyes popping out. Eyes popping out. You, people just don't want to see it again. You know, they're they're happy with the original. <laughs> and Battleship is a board game movie. The first time I heard about it, I thought it was a joke, and the second time I heard about it. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> it's There's about just little plastic nubs on the ocean. I think if you <laughs> round up the actors and actually had them play Battleship, it would be more interesting. Especially if Donald Glover was in it. I'm just going to put in a plug for that. Yeah. That's right. The other big flops that you voted for look like they fall into the category of franchise fatigue. Uh, our very top vote was for Men in Black 3, with almost 22% of you thinking that it was going to fail. I can't imagine why. And also The Amazing Spider-Man, um, which came in at around 12%. Uh, and I think, you know, people may just not be, I mean, even though The Amazing Spider-Man looks really exciting in the trailers, I think people are just not ready for another one so soon. Yeah, I, I gave my heart to one Uncle Ben. I don't want to invest it in another. But I'm kind of surprised that Men in Black did so high because I want to see Josh Brolin's 
I guess, hour and a half long Tommy Lee Jones impression. Like, I just want him to go through the whole film, like, doghouse, outhouse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Search everything. I just think if they're going to go back to the 60s and they don't have Austin Powers in it, it's just, <laughs> why are they even there? All right, so the clear loser of the poll, and therefore I think the deserved winner of the summer, is Pixar's Brave. It got 2% of the vote, so Celtic war warrior princesses with archery lessons are really in this year. That's right. How can it lose? I mean, it's Pixar, it's, you know, awesome, Big, brave women. Big, curly redheads. That's true. Yeah, that's right. It's so perfect. we're excited. <laughs> Good choice, you guys. Okay, so speaking of death and battling, if you find yourself battling Celtic spirits or vampires or want to join the Avengers, but all you've got is a candle and a produce aisle, don't worry, we're going to set you up. We're going to show you how to make fruit fireballs, weapon from fruit. And this week's Esther Gets Experimental. It's now time for the part of the show called Esther Gets Experimental, where I play a mad scientist. Today, we're going to show you how to turn citrus peels into a flamethrower, which is useful if you need to ward off tiny little vampires. We're going to try different kinds of citrus um, against our little vampire here, who we're going to call Edward for obvious reasons. Um, so I'm going to try, here's an orange peel. I'm going to start by trying to squirt Edward with this orange peel. I might try a little bit bigger piece. So Esther, why, whoa, why, why is this, why is this shooting flames? Okay, so this is fl shooting flames because it has what we call limonene. It's a hydrocarbon. It's a string of hydrogen and carbon atoms. Uh, this hydrocarbon citrus fruits use it as an insect repellent. So hydrocarbons are basically just anything that's, uh, you know, hydrogen and carbon that's got some other crap mixed into it and it's pretty flammable. That's a lemon. In the atmosphere, they can have all kinds of different chemicals mixed into them, which is why we try to get them out, but... In this case, basically, the, these citruses have evolved to just to have flamethrower fuel on their skin yeah. to kill insects, but now to kill tiny vampires. Whoa! <gasps> that was awesome! <laughs> all right, let me try this. This is orange again. It's clear that who is the vampire slayer here? Into each generation, a slayer is born. So what was our best shot here? I think it depends on technique, as we saw with you. But um, really, I think the bigger ones, like the orange and the grapefruit, are your best hope in defeating tiny little vampires. Bigger, bigger pieces of, of fruit, seem, bigger pieces of peel seem to work better. Well, thanks to science, we've learned that the evolution of the citrus fruit can help you defeat a very tiny vampire, whether it's Edward or Stefan or Damon or Bill or Dracula or anyone you want to fry. All right. Well, we'll be back to We Come From The Future in a second. And first, a word from our sponsor. No true fan's life is complete without a personal blog or website to let the world know how they feel about Battleship or the wisdom of rebooting the Spider-Man movie franchise. So let HostGator help you on your way. HostGator can get your blog or website up and running in minutes. With plans starting at just $3.96 a month, you get 24-7 support, access to website building tools with over 4,000 templates. They'll even migrate your current site for free. HostGators are also 130% powered by wind energy. For Revision 3 viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month is free. Just go to HostGator.com and enter the code FUTUREREV3 at checkout. Okay, well welcome back. Hopefully you've armed yourself with some oranges and grapefruit. And now to send you into the weekend in the right mood, we're going to bring you into a little segment that we like to call This Is Awesome. Scientists have announced the creation of synthetic DNA, which they call XNA. And this is a nucleic acid-like substance, like DNA, but the sugary backbone of the DNA has been replaced by six different alternative but compatible polymers, which creates what the scientists called unnatural sequences, which I thought was a great term. Also, just making this even more amazing, this XNA can evolve just like DNA. And it interacts with regular DNA, so it'll just fit in with your DNA strand. But 
it is impervious to enzymes that degrade regular DNA. So if an enzyme rips apart your DNA strand, it cannot do anything to XNA, which means we've created super DNA, or as we like to put it, DNA with an adamantium skeleton. So basically this is the wolverine of DNA. Yes, so that's, it's that's the best it is at what it does. <laughs> <laughs> and what it does is replicate. <laughs> um, probably this is just initially gonna be used for like material science stuff and diagnostics, but in the future, say 20, 40, 100 years from now, we really could be seeing XNA being inserted into your DNA and helping to create a more robust chromosome you know you'd be maybe impervious to radiation or which means you could actually go into space with xna because cosmic rays do damage to your dna so we could be creating mutant astronauts and thank goodness because i am ready to go to mars right now so if you have questions comments or feedback if you already have xna and you want to show it to us email us at we come from the future at revision3.com and please don't forget to subscribe to the show, either on youtube.com slash io9future show. Or you can subscribe on iTunes through our RSS feed at revision3.com. We come from the future. Okay, so that's it from this week's We Come From The Future. I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. And I'm Annalie Newitz. We'll see you next week when we'll serve you a giant bowl of tomorrow and jam your face into it. <laughs>